<laughs> That's it. I can't believe I finished it. I finished it. I made it. <laughs> so for once in my life, I finally finished an October challenge. Every year I go into it, I'm like, I'm gonna do an October drawing daily challenge. I'm gonna finish it. I get three or four days into it. Life gets in the way, whatever it is, and it doesn't happen. This year, 31 paintings. <laughs> we actually did it. We got through it. I'm so tired. This year I took part specifically in Mab's Drawloween Challenge. I referenced this in my last video where I actually show you the paint process of one of the pieces. Um, it's by Mab Graves. She does a Halloween themed list for October. And if you've seen any of my videos, you probably have a pretty good idea that I really like Halloween, horror movies, all things creepy, scary, fun, and weird. So this challenge is right up my alley and uh, had a great time with it. Although, I mean, some days were harder than others, let's say. But before I really get into the nitty gritty of what I learned out of the process, what I got out of it, I'm going to show you all the works that I created. So here's a quick show of everything that's done, all 31 paintings. Let's go. So I'd say the first challenge of getting all of this done was making sure to put aside the time every day and really allow that to happen. If this wasn't a quarantine year with the whole pandemic situation and it was the same like chaos as most years, would I have gotten it done? I don't know, but I'm glad that I did. Um, the second big thing that came from this challenge was that you really gotta let go of perfectionism. Cause you have to produce this kind of quickly, right? You can't spend days mulling on an idea and then a few more days researching topics and your composition and fussing around with details. You gotta make decisions pretty fast. So yeah, if I have a word, 
whether or not I have a great idea. Some of them I came into it and I just knew exactly what I was going to do. Some of them I came into it and I'd be like, I have no clue. So I do some sketches as quickly as I could manage getting ideas flowing from my head, which can be a trick sometimes. But choosing one of the first few ideas you come up with. And then from there, one of the first few compositions you come up with in terms of like your topic, this is how it's going to look, and then you got to get it done. So that's also managing your media. Now I decided uh, to do paintings every day in watercolor. And what worked for that was doing small pieces. They could be finished relatively quickly, um, within usually an hour or two, maybe three on some pieces that got a little more in depth. Total, I mean, I'm not sitting there painting the whole time because you'd like walk away, let it dry, come back to it, keep working. But that allowed me to do this fast. If I was trying to work in like acrylic paint or something like that, I don't know what that would have looked like either. I probably could have done these faster if I'd done an ink medium. And then it's just the drawing and then add detail to the drawing. But I wanted to continue down my path of trying to learn and understand the watercolor media better, get better at it myself, and just follow that line of thought that I already have going. So yeah, that was a multi-pronged thing is just letting go of perfection, getting something done that day that didn't have to be perfect, posting it, even though maybe some year I really was proud of and some I was kind of like, Ugh, about, but you just, it's all part of the process, so that's fine. And it was great, and it was so good because perfectionism is a big problem for me. That blank page staring back at you that just is daring you to make that first terrible mark. You know what I mean. The third thing that I learned is kind of taking what I just said to another level. Uh, by not being able to be a perfectionist about your work, you're letting go of some control and just getting things done. And it kind of allows you to step back and be an observer of yourself and what you kind of just go to, what your automatics are. Um, and also I was able to do some experimenting too. So between the just like my auto zone, what do I just go to quickly if I know I just need to accomplish something? And the, I, the ability to be like, this is a quick piece. What if I approach it a little bit differently this time? I'm not ruining anything because I know I just got to produce something today anyway. So let's see what happens. Um, those were really interesting to do and then step back at the end of this whole process. Number four of my learned things is reflection. When I look back at this body of work that I've created, and you may have noticed this too when I showed you all 31 pieces, not terribly consistent in voice or style. I have some things that I like to do that are really dark and moody. And then on the flip side, I often go to something that's very light and colorful and fun. And I'm not sure I'd love to be able to consolidate these two things because I love like the reference of candy colored things. I was a kid that grew up in the 80s and 90s and Lisa Frank was everything back then. I remember my Lisa Frank Trapper Keeper. Shout out to anyone who knows what a Trapper Keeper is. But yeah. That candy colored, but cute, but creepy. I love that stuff. But then sometimes what just comes out of me is this real dark stuff and moody. And I love that too. So I really identified those things. There were a few pieces in between that kind of started to bridge a gap for me, although I'm not necessarily feeling like I've got it. But that was really eye opening, very interesting. What can I do with that going forward? How can I take these conflicting concepts in my mind and make them one cohesive voice from myself? So that's going to be a challenge for me going forward. And I don't know if I would have come to this conclusion if I hadn't done this challenge. So how amazing is that? Now, I would absolutely recommend that you try something like this, something to challenge yourself, a daily art challenge, a daily, like maybe if it's even, I'm gonna draw a portrait every day, I'm gonna do something every day for a month, for a year, if you're very ambitious and can hold yourself to that, whatever it is, hold yourself to a challenge and find out what you can learn about the way that you work and what you wanna create. 
and then look back on it and see what can you take away from the process. I highly recommend it. I am an exceptionally flawed human being and artist and I managed to complete this project. So if I can do it, you absolutely can do it. And I hope you try. In the meantime, I'm gonna sleep for like four days for sure and maybe not leave my bed at all because I'm tired. <laughs> so I am almost ready to hit the ground running again because I got these ideas stewing in the back of my head from this project. So I hope you stick around and see what we create next. I'd love to see what you're creating. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let's take this journey together, guys. I will see you next time. Stay sane, make things. Mm, chainsaw. Mm.